Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to get started working on yet another dead MacBook. This is an A1706 that has liquid damage. Let's open it up and see if we can figure out why it's not working and make it turn on again. First thing we got to do, take the bottom cover off of the computer. Do you have Apple toilet paper in your online store? Oh, I wish I had toilet paper in my store. We didn't stock up in time though. What is this? What the lever-loving F is this? CD3215, corroded. The battery sticker is on top of the CPU! Why? CD3215 corrosion. And these are underfilled CD3215s as well. With any luck, it'll just be a short to ground on the cab next to it. Nothing at all. USB ammeter registers zero. Doesn't register anything, actually. It doesn't even think I plugged anything in. Let's see what it does on the other side of the board. On the other side of the board, we get 5 volts at 300 milliamps. And it doesn't appear to jump up to 20. For those of you who have problems reading upside down, look at that. You just tap it twice and ba-bing, ba-boom. Okay, so the issue that we appear to be having here is that it stays at 5 volts, which is understandable given the amount of corrosion we have on our USB-C chip. Okay, so the first thing is you may have noticed the charge port worked on the right halfway, but not on the left. This is what the charge port on the left looks like. That is one corroded up charge port. Oh man. Now the main corrosion that troubles me is this. So remember, folks, anybody who's watching out there at home on your television sets, that we need PP3V3 underscore G3 hot to be present. And if PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is not present, then that this chip over here is not going to speak to the charger and it's not going to ask for the 20 volts that is needed for this computer to turn on. So what I'd like to check and see is, is PP3V3 underscore G3 hot actually present? Now, some of these capacitors that happen to have heavy amounts of corrosion on them, these are the capacitors that have PP3V3 underscore G3 hot on them, which may, leads me to believe that perhaps the problem is that PP3V3 underscore G3 hot doesn't exist as it's being short-circuited to ground. The best way to figure that out is with a measurement. Now it's a steady 3.4. Very interesting. I just had to scrape at it a little bit. Okay. 0.9, 3.3. Yeah, no, that's not what's messed up, but it's, it's jumping. I wonder if maybe there is a minor short circuit, like a half short. Piece of shit. Piece of sheet, cock and... Come on. Come on. Go. You crap capacitor. Perhaps this debug resistor is more important than I give it credit for. Now the resistor that's going to go there is 1 million ohms. Do you have any concept of how many ohms 1 million ohms are? If Michael Bloomberg gave 1 million ohms to everybody in the United States, we'd all be a millionaire.
still 330 milliamps at 5 volts and then turns off. Kind of curious what the resistance to ground on the good old PP bus is. Alright, thousands of ohms, that's good. All right, now we have a ROM chip above this CD3215, and I believe we found our problem. See that? See these two resistors here? There you go. Now, what I just showed you there, take a look on the schematic and the board view. It's going to rotate it. Thunderbolt ROM. RB090 is going to be a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. And the resistor next to it is going to be a 100 ohm resistor. And what was that connected to? Nothing. I really need my micro pencil back. Some All right, so I'm going to take out my resistor booklet. Let's start off with a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. Gravity does not work. When coronavirus pandemic hits these types of heights, you'll notice that some of the basic laws of physics cease to operate. One of them is gravity. See how the resistor doesn't drop on its own anymore? Okay, I'm gonna put that down. using these shitty hot tweezers. Oh, this is so annoying.
All right, the next resistor, I believe, was a 100 ohm resistor. Yes, 100 ohms goes next to it. So that looping that we saw is most likely the result of it trying to read the ROM, failing to read the ROM, and turning off. So now I know what that is. See, that's the beautiful part about corrosion. It allows, and this is why pattern recognition is so important. It's not like there's a book written that says how all these things work out. Rather, you just kind of figure it out as you go. So I, the, I found out there was a corroded resistor on the ROM. And the issue that I was having prior to that was stuck at 5 volts. It stays, the, it turns on with 300 milliamps for a few seconds, and then it, it turn, the charger turns off. So when I have that problem, now what I do is I deduce that that problem occurred when the resistor to the ROM chip for Thunderbolt wasn't there. So now I, what I do is I have to think. And thinking is very important. You're going to have to try and figure out for your own, without it being written down anywhere, without there being a manual, why? Why did that occur? What, what is the relation that these two things have? Are they related at all? And I believe they are. And if this fixes the problem, then I'll have that relation in my head that when the Thunderbolt ROM is corrupt or just not there, that you get 5 volts, 300 milliamps for 3 seconds, and then it doesn't just not go to 20 volts, it reboots itself. But remember, this is just a theory at the moment, not a reality, and oh shit, I almost ripped that freaking pad. I have to. I really don't like hot tweezers. I can't wait to find my micro pencil back. Okay, now I'm going to see if I get any change when I plug this in, or is it the exact same shit? 19.5. It's working. Now, I just, I just ruined my overhead camera in the middle of this damn video, so I can't show you it in the, doing that in the overhead camera. You can see 19.5 volts. So we are getting somewhere here. We are getting somewhere here. Look, it turns on. 5 volts, 330 milliamps. 19 volts, 400 milliamps. 19 volts, 500 milliamps. 19 volts, 400 milliamps. 19 volts, 250 milliamps, 19 volts, 300 milliamps, 19 volts, 200 milliamps, and then it goes to 10, then it goes back and reboots to 340 milliamps. You know what? Just to show you all the... Here, I messed up my overhead camera, but I'll show you that it works in the uh, main camera by just plugging it in. Aha! Okay. So this machine has booted, as you can see here. So the issue here was that we had corrosion around the USB-C chip, the USB-C MUX. Now, the main corrosion that I saw was not the corrosion that actually mattered, the corrosion on the 3.3 volt power line that's going to power that I see. The real corrosion that mattered was the corrosion around the Thunderbolt ROM. So now I learned something. So the Thunderbolt ROM chip has resistors going to it, and when they were corroded, I had it turn on and give me 5 volts for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 seconds at 300 milliamps, and then it shut straight off. So now I know if it's taking 5 volts for 5 seconds and then just boot loops on me like that, not boot loops immediately, 5 volts, 300 milliamps, 5 seconds turns off, ROM issue. And the way you figure that out is with pattern recognition. Have a detective's mindset in pattern recognition. It's not written down. There's no manual that says that this is how this works. You just got to use your brain. And if you want to dive in, Use your brain just a little bit every now and then. You can fix a MacBook. I'm going to put those two capacitors back on that I tossed off of the little MacBook. And once they're back on the little MacBook, I can give this back to the customer. And then I can collect some money. And I'll put that money towards my $75,000 credit card bill. Isn't moving to a new space in New York City just great? All right. So let's find a donor with those two little capacitors by it. I love New York.
Obviously this cap is semi-optional, seeing that it turned on and booted up perfectly without it. But the nice thing to do is to put it back. These hot tweezers are as useless as tits on a bull, I swear. You know what? That can stay nice and crooked. That resistor is going to stay crooked. I got this one review on Yelp and Google where it says, Apple would have never put something there that's crooked. It's like, yep. Apple also was going to charge you $1,500 and tell you no data. Suck my dick. But no, really, these hot tweezers are so fucking beyond useless for this. I have to steal my micro pencil back from David. This is... This is gonna happen. I'm taking that micro pencil. I know that he never uses it anyway. Alright, that's good. That'll last. Beautiful. Nice and crooked. Crooked just like Apple. 